Okay, so in the last video, we were looking at how to work out the margin of errors. And we used the rule of thumb margin of error to work out the, for national and labor, the margin of error based on 1,750 voters was 2.4. And we then used the other percentage uh, to work out our margin of error for the Greens, oh, sorry, our formula, because their percentage was smaller than 30%. They only got they were only likely to get 8% of the vote. Therefore, we had to use a slightly different formula to work that out. So this less, or this video is about working out the confidence intervals. And the confidence interval is the proportion plus or minus the margin of error. So we know that National were likely to get 46% of the vote. So therefore, to work out their margin or their confidence interval, I would have to add and subtract the 2.4% margin of error to that because I'm taking into account the fact that my sample has different people in it each time I take it. So that's what I'm actually working out here. So I'm going to get a range of values from 48.4% down to uh, 43.6 percent and my true population percentage my population proportion is likely to be in between those two values and I can do the same with labor because labor's value was also in that range they were likely to get 37 percent so i'm going to add and subtract the 2.4 percent of the margin of error for them because they're in that 30 to 70 percent and i'm going to get that 39.4 percent and my bottom value is going to be 34.6 percent so their population proportion is likely to be there so that's what i'm working out now at this point i can start talking about saying that if someone had made the claim that uh four out of ten people are going to vote national and someone had counted with the claim that four out of ten people are going to vote labor i could statistically agree with the statement that four out of ten people are going to vote national because my percentage 43.6 percent is higher than 40 percent whereas i could claim that the proportion for four out of ten voting labor is not true because my 39.4 percent doesn't quite go above the 40 percent threshold so i can't make that claim but I also couldn't make the claim that majority of people in New Zealand are going to vote national because my proportion here doesn't quite go above 50%. But like we did at level two with our uh, inference and with our four informal conference intervals, I could make a statement that national are likely to get more votes or a higher proportion than Labour because there is no overlap in my percentages. You know, my highest value for Labour is only 39.4. My lowest value for National is 43.6. If those two overlapped, I couldn't make a claim. I'd have to make a statement along the lines of, I don't have enough evidence, okay, to support any claim about one party having more votes. Whereas the Greens, the Greens, because they had a smaller proportion of the vote they ended up with a smaller margin of error which is only 1.27 percent so their true population proportion is between 9.27 percent and 6.73 percent So their population proportion is likely to be between 6.73% and 9.27%.
So in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at another way of comparing national and labor by looking at the difference. And then the video after that, we're going to do our last video on calculations for this one, which is working out between two different samples with two different margins of error, how I can work out a difference there and see if support has changed for a particular thing. Okay, so until next time.